Well, I've been very busy in my little sewing shed. I've been transforming ordinary, very affordable plant pots into useful items for around your home. Things that you can store, your sewing bits and bobs that you can make into candle holders or tea light holders that, of course, you can put plants into. You could be storing your fat quarters. Oh, wouldn't these be amazing if you were to use them as um, a napkin holders for an outdoor barbecue when your guests come around? I'll show you how I've made all of those, but the first two we're going to take a look at are these. So first of all, let me show you how I decorated an ordinary plant pot just with string. So this is a plant pot that's completely covered in string. You don't have to use a size of string, you could use a narrow string, you could use some cord for piping maybe, and even dye that and make it different colours. And I just popped a ribbon around the top of this one. For the second pot, I'm just going to go from the lip down, so I don't need to use as much string. And all I've got, just ordinary string, and double-sided tape to secure it on there. And I've got my glue gun just heating up, and that's going to hold the final piece of string in place. So I'll go around probably three or four times with the double-sided tape, just going down like this and sticking it in place. I'll take the paper off in a second. And you'll find this is quite secure enough to hold your string in place. Obviously, you're not going to wash it and you're not going to leave these outside in the rain. And just to mention as well, you can paint the plant pots before you start putting any decorations on them. Um, but do be careful if you're going to use those with a real candle because the heat from the candle may make the paint bubble a little bit. So I wouldn't paint the inside of them if you're going to use those. But if this is just going to be for storage or decoration, then paint away any colour you like, any kind of paint you like. So just peel those backings off. And then we'll start with the fun bit, which is winding the string around. There's always one. There we go. So I'm starting just on the tape here, and I'm going to bend that string inward slightly so that it overlaps when I come around the other side. And my first piece of string, I'm going to push right up against that rim around the lip here. And you can see here where I overlap. And that's just going to secure the first end of the string in place. And then you simply wind. It would be an idea maybe to wind some ribbon in with your string, or if you've got a very fine string, you could plait that before you pop it on. I've actually got a knot in my string, but uh, I'm not too worried about that because I think it adds to that old, rustic kind of look. So keeping that as tight as I can, pressing one piece up against the next until I get to the bottom and when I get to the very bottom I'm going to pop a bit of glue from my glue gun just to stop this coming undone so just for the final stretch around here there's my glue snip away the end final blob of glue to hold that in place and then I'm just going to put some more glue over the top of the frayed edge of the string so it doesn't come undone. No. I'll just leave that to dry that way around for a second. Like with the, um, the pot that I covered completely with string, I'm going to put some ribbon around the top, but this one's going to be stuck straight onto the pot like so. So I'll measure the amount of ribbon that I need and cut that off. And I'll pop some glue around this one. Sounds like we've got visitors. Um, because it's, uh, it's a little bit narrower than my tape. So there we go. Do be careful if you're using a glue gun, especially if you've got kids doing these, because they do get very, very hot. And you'll need to be quick to line this up and make it straight, because it dries almost instantly. You can pull it off again if you make a mistake, but if you can get it right first time, it makes it a lot easier. So I'll just trim the end of my ribbon and a final dob of glue just here. Now where that overlaps is where I'm going to put my bow. Oh, that slipped down a little bit, so I can just manoeuvre that back again. That's fine. There we go. So a nice big bow on the front. It could be the same ribbon or a contrasting one. Some of these pots are decorated with buttons as well, and you can pop those onto any one 
of the pots just by gluing them on again with your hot glue gun or a very strong glue. I'll cut the ends of the ribbon so that they don't fray. And then we'll pop a blob of glue just over that meeting point. So, and there we're done. Now this is a really simple pot. It's simply a piece of fabric that I've frayed, wrapped around, stuck in place with a bow on the front. But I think it looks really striking. It really stands out. So this is how I did it. Again, there's my pot. Uh, this is just a piece of cotton fabric. You can see the size of that. It's a scrap. It could be ribbon or it could be something that um, you're recycling from an old shirt or maybe even a, a, a tablecloth. And I tore the fabric into shape so it had a rough edge. And then all I've done is simply fray that a little bit more all the way around the edge by about a quarter of an inch. That's quite fun to do, actually. Right, then I'm going to stick that on. Um, the length, by the way, you'll need to wrap that around the pot and overlap. Because your fabric's straight and your pot's conical, it won't wrap around perfectly, so it will come up to a V-shape at the front when it sits flat. But I kind of like that. It looks as though it's hugging the pot almost. This time I'm going to put a double-sided tape on my fabric. And I'll put um, a couple of strips on there. Squash it down just to make sure that it's going to stick. Again, you can use um, a fabric glue or a craft glue for this if you wanted to. It just means that you probably have to hold the, um, the fabric in place while it dries. With double-sided tape, it's, it's practically instant. <clears throat> so peel the backing off. And I think it's such a lovely way to, to customise something that's very ordinary and make it something quite extraordinary or personal. Why not try some with, uh, with a Christmas fabric um, to pop your napkins in or even a little gift? Okay, so wrap that around. Lace would be nice as well. If you have some vintage type of lace with rustic fabric always works well. Right, that's standing up a little bit too much, but because that's double-sided, I can undo that. So if you're not happy, then undo and start again. I just want that to wrap around a little bit lower. That'll do. And you know, I think the beauty of, of making things like this they don't have to be 100% absolutely perfect. If you're making things to sell, then that's a different matter. But if this is just for your, for your home or for your garden, don't worry about things being perfect. They don't need to be. My bow for this one is a wire-edged hessian ribbon. It doesn't have to be wire-edged, but you can get hold of this um, in lots of places at the moment. So I'll just tie that into a bow. And the nice thing about the wire edge is that you can shape the bow so you can put waves in your tails and you can make sure that the, the loops of the bow really keep their dimension, their shape. I'll cut that V again just to stop the hessian from fraying. It will still fray. That's the nature of the beast with the hessian. But it looks good when it frays, so that's fine. OK, so I'll open up the bow make it nice and fat and this is why I love the hessian look because you can really shape it like so and that is simply going to be glued straight onto the front of my pot come on one more squeeze that'll do And there we go, there's pot number two finished. Some of the other pots that I've decorated, like this one, I've kept the theme very similar. So if you noticed all of the pots that I've done, I've got a little bit of red and a little bit of something natural looking. With this one, I've done the same thing with a piece of tape this time instead of the fabric or the ribbon, made a bow out of the tape and the red bits to coordinate come from the buttons. And those have simply been stuck on all the way around. If you wanted to take your time a little bit more, there is a method of taking a piece of string or a piece of thread and actually threading them through the button holes before you stick them on. And you could use that with card making as well. It, it gives the illusion that the button's been sewn on um, instead of uh, just glued on. But those are just simply glued all the way around. 
nice way to use up your leftover buttons as well. And we've got a, a plant in that one. The next one I have here is again very, very simple. This time I've got another piece of the wire edged hessian ribbon and this one's in the dark red. So my red theme is carrying on through again. And this time I've wrapped it around the pot, stuck it on with the double sided tape and my green gingham ribbon is just glued in the centre and then I wrapped it around and joined it back up with a blob of glue in the centre. And any of your misgivings, any mistakes, cover them over with a bow. And if you mistake on your bow, then you cover that over with a button. So that it, it always, it, you can't overdress this. You can't put too many embellishments on them, basically. As long as all of the colours match well, then everything's going to work. And my final pot here, I think is the simplest of all of them. Again, it's a, a ribbon wrapped around, just a checked ribbon. So wrap this around first with a double-sided tape, pop your bow on the front with your glue gun or strong glue, and then I've put a button just there in the centre, in the same red to match with all my other pots. And this one, as you can see, is used for storing buttons. So I think you'll agree. We've got something for every occasion. Dress them up for Christmas time, use them outside at barbecue time in the summer, and enjoy them. Have a little bit of fun making them as well.